Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture 3 of database design and management. So in this lecture we shall be having a final look on database design. We have a case study to go through the process of database design and then we'll also do one or two things with MySQL workbench on the database we designed for this case study. And we also look at database relationship, the kind of relationships we can have in the tables in our database. Um, thereafter, we'll talk about the structured query language and we'll look at one of the subset of that, which is the data definition language. We'll say one or two things about that and we'll have a class activity and an exercise to call it a day. So, in the previous lecture, we dis discussed extensively on what database design is, and we we'll talk about the process involved in creating a database or having a our, our database design. So, in this lecture, we we'll simply look at a case study of a simple social media system, and uh, we we'll try to follow the process of the database design to come up with a database for our simple small social media app. So for this app, we have this case study where we have a user that makes use of this social media apps and the user are able to create accounts to the system. They're able to log into the system, create a post, comment on posts that are created by other users and also our user can actually send a direct message and also receive a direct message. So if we can look into this use case, uh, uh, from this use case we can actually uh, begin identify, begin to identify the requirements that we need for our database. So right from uh, the first case, which is to create account. In order for our user to create account, we, we actually need a table that can store account information for users. So maybe one of the requirement for our database is to have the account table, right? So we may have an account table that can store users account and their login credentials. So the second use case, which is uh, actually login, it has to do with the account table, right? So that whenever the user wants to log in, uh, that information passes through the account table to authenticate that user in order to give that user an access to log in or not. The third use case here is to create a post. Uh, our user will definitely create a post when they've once they've actually created an account with our me social media app, they can log in. So the next thing is for them to create a post or send a messages. So and we, 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 we actually need a way of storing those posts. So for that reason, we may also have a table called post table where we store posts from different kind of users. And then we have the comments on post, which is another use case uh, which is another use case in our social media app. So uh, what this use case means is that uh, it's simply a comment on different kind of posts that our user posts. Whenever a user posts uh, an information in this social media app, other users may have interest or maybe an opinion on that post and they may want to share one or two comments regarding that post. So uh, we will also need to have a provision of storing those kind of comments, right? So we will have a comment table that can store comments associated to each of these posts. And then uh, lastly, to send and receive a direct message. So, uh, which is one of the main uh, requirement of a social media app, right? Is to send and receive a direct message 
So for this use case, uh, we may have a three table associated to that. And the reason is that uh, your users can actually send information, also send a message. And this message can be sent at any time, any point in time, uh, at any point in time, at in any region or any location our user can be. It can actually send this information. And the party that is receiving that information also receive this message at a particular time, which is different from the time that that message was sent. And then that party B can also be in different location or region as it may be. So for that reason, we need to store those uh, vital information like, okay, uh, where um, the time that the sender A is sending it, the location and things like that and also information regarding the receiver too. So for that reason, we have the sender table that store information about the sender, and then we have the receiver table that store information about the receiver of that DM. And then we have the chat table that store the chat information, that is the messages that uh, goes in between uh, the DMs. So, for each of these table, we may have uh, each. Uh, we may have fields or fields for each of these table, as follows. Maybe in our account table, so definitely we need to have an ID, right? Which is the primary key. We've talked about what primary key is. So we may need username for each users that want to register their password and maybe their full name. So this is the minimum requirement that we may need for the account table. So for the post table where different user can actually post, we need ID as usual for uh, identifying each record, right? And then we need to know which user is actually posting an information. So for that reason, we need the account table ID. We need to know the ID of that account that is actually posting that information. And then we need to know the post or the information that is actually being posted. And then the timestamp, which is actually the period of time where that post was made. So this is this also a minimal requirement that we can have in this post table. We can actually have more than this. And then for the comment table, we have ID to uniquely identify each of the record in the comment, right? So then we need to know which post that a comment is being made on, right? So for that reason, we need to have the ID of that post and then the comments that is being made on that post and then the particular point of time that that comment was made. So for this sender table, we have the ID and timestamp as a minimum requirement for this table. For now, we don't we don't want to add things like region, location, and so on. So and receiver too, we may want to have okay the ID and also timestamp. That is a uh, timestamp as well for the receiver. And then we'll have a table called chat table where we have the sender ID for a particular message, the receiver ID for that message, the message that was being sent, and then the timestamp for that as well. So we can, uh, before we move into a uh, database relationship, I will want to go into the MySQL Workbench environment. So to see how we can actually create uh, a schema and table like this, and then also uh, store this information into uh, our MySQL server. So that is just what we are going to be doing in the MySQL Workbench. So in order for us to do that, we need to open our MySQL Workbench. On that file here, you select a new model. So uh, selecting, uh, a new model you can actually name your model here we can uh, name our database as let me just say a uh, social social media so from here we can 
actually start by uh, creating a table that is one way and um, another way to that is uh, we can uh, we can select uh, we can add a diagram instead of having uh, if instead of creating our table I prefer using the diagram so that we can have a diagrammatic view of how our database is at and at the same time we also have the tables for our database so to begin creating the table in this diagram view at this panel we can just simply select the table a table and then we name the table the first table in our database is actually the account account table and our account table has information like id which is the primary key right and then um it has a username so our username can be vaca this uh, this data type is uh, it represents a string or maybe a string of information so depending on the length of that information in this case we say vaca 45 so our username cannot exceed our 45 uh, characters or strings of characters so and then we may want to have the password of the user so password to i will leave it 45 and maybe our full name full name of that user as well so and we are done with the account table we can move to the next table which is or uh, the post table right so post so in the post table we also have id our id which is uh, the primary key so it has to be an integer right since it's in between uh it's an integer number that we use to number uh we to number each of this record and it has to be unique right in this case so we also need to know the account id right we can just say account account id so this has to be integer as well so and then the post this post can be vaca we can increase this to maybe 495 um after the post what do we have again the timestamp right uh, the timestamp that is the particular time where this information is sent so we can change this to date time or we can select timestamp um I think that that is just the information we have for the post table after the post table we also have comment table right comment table so in our comment table we have id and then uh, we have the post id right we need to know which post that comment belong to which is also an integer and then we also need to uh, we also need to know the comments so i can just say comment and then the timestamp timestamp so we can also select timestamp so basically this is how we create our uh, data database table from uh, the MySQL workbench. Uh, after that, we have. Oh, uh, let me go to. Let me look at it again. Okay, we have. Okay, we have the sender, receiver, and then the chart table, right? So I can simply create sender table. So in the sender table, we simply have the ID of the sender and then we have time, 
timestamp to know when that message was actually sent so as a minimum requirement so the same thing for receiver table we have receiver table so we have id and then we have timestamp as well timestamp so under here we have we select timestamp as our data type and then lastly we have our chart table chart table where we have id has to be primary key right um then we have we need to know who is sending the information uh, the sender sender id it has to be integer as well and then we need to know the receiver receiver id which is also an integer and then the message being passed so we can leave this back uh, let's say 255 so message can be very very long so and then the last thing is timestamp to keep uh, an appropriate log of this record too so check the timestamp so here are so basically here are the tables for our database so what we can do here if we want to store this into our server directly because this is just a diagram and uh, we just have a table but we we don't have its representation in our server so as far as that is concerned there's no such database in our mysql server so in order for us to save this we simply go to the database menu and uh, i've already made up my connection but you can actually create your connection here by specifying your username and if your server has a password you specify the password and then the port number and then host also like that and you need to ensure that your server is actually on i'm actually using uh the zamp so my server is actually on i, I don't need to show you that so I can just go to you can just go to forward engineer directly so and from here uh depending if you have any store connection you can just uh, make use of it but in my case everything is fine i have the host name i have the port number which is correct and the username for my mysql server so for that reason i'll click on continue and then from here you can also create uh continue and then continue so this will actually create the SQL uh, syntax for all of this database for you. So, and then on clicking on continue, it will store this into your database, your MySQL server. So when we check our MySQL server, now we can see a database called Social Media Hub. So we'll see that in uh, the subsequent, in our subsequent discussion, so for now i want us to move uh to the next item in uh sorry the next item in our slide so the next item in our slide which is our database relationship so this the database relationship is actually uh it actually defines how tables in our database relate to one another so and we have basically three kind of relationship that can exist between the tables in our database we have the one to one relationship one to many relationship and also many to many relationship so beginning with one to one relationship is a very simple relationship whereby one record in our table or table a is associated to one record in table b if you can think of it that way so when we have one record in one table associated to just one record in another table we refer to that as a one-to-one -one relationship 
So uh, usually we use one-to-one -one relationship whenever we want to break information in one database table. So maybe we don't want the information in one database table to be too much, we will decide to break it into two tables. So an example of that is, assuming we have a customer table in our data, in a database, and that, that customer table may have information regarding that customer and also information regarding the next of kin of that customer. So in that case, maybe that those information can be just too much for that one table. We may want to have maybe the customer information separately and we may want to have the next of kin information separately. So in that case, one record or one customer in that customer table may have just one relationship with the nest of kin table in order to link nest of kin to each customer. So that kind of relationship, we may uh, refer to it as a one-to-one -one relationship. And then we have the one-to-many relationship, which is a kind of relationship where one record in one table is associated to many record in another table. And we can see many of many examples of that in our social media database that we, we've just created. So one of the examples is the relationship between the account table and the post table. So each account in our account table may have, uh, each account may have uh, several posts like let's assume i'm a user of that social media app and you are also a user so i as a user may decide to have like 10 posts in a day you may also decide to have as many posts as you want in a day so in that situation each of us as a user we have we actually have some relationship or we have some relationship with that post table and then our record we have so many records associated to us in that post table. So let's look at uh, the MySQL workbench to actually uh, clarify this. So here is our account table. And uh, if you can see in the post table, we actually have account ID. So this account ID signifies that, okay, for every post, we need to know from which account that post is actually coming from. So a lot of us make use of social media and we can't even count the number of posts that we've actually posted in some of these social medias like Facebook and so on. So each of our record as an account now account table actually has many relationships to the post table. And we actually signify this relationship using uh, uh, we, we actually have a way of denoting this relationship. We have some, uh, we have the provision for that in uh, MySQL workbench. So if we want to create a relationship between this account table and post table now, because uh, one account has many records in the post table, I, I, I'm, I'm going to use this relationship. So just this little panel over here, you can see something like one to one, one to n, one to one, one to n, and so on. So this actually means uh, the kind of relationship that we can actually create on our database table. So on creating this kind of relationship whereby one account actually has, can have many instances of post table. So this relationship will automatically add this account table ID for us. So in that case, we don't need to actually manually add this account ID, which we've added at the beginning. So I can just uh, choose to delete, delete that. Since now I have the account table dot ID, which signifies the kind of relationship between these two table. I hope this is uh, very clear. So another example is the relationship between post table and comment table is also a one-to-many relationship, meaning that one post in the post table can has can have many records associated to it in the comment table, because in our comment table we may have a lot of comments 
that are associated to just one post. At times you see that when you make a post, for example, in your Facebook, when you enter the comment section, you see a lot of comments. So that is because the, uh, that, is, that shows the kind of relationship between a post and a comment. That is for every post you have, you may have many comments for it. That is, you may have many comments associated to that post. And that is what one to many relationship means in that context of post and comment. So if you want to, if you actually want to link this relationship to, we may decide to remove this post ID because on linking that relationship right from the workbench, it will generate uh, the post ID for us. So we can see now we have post table dot ID in our comment table, indicating that there is actually a one to many relationship between this table. Um, so let's move to the next relationship, which is many to many relationship. So the many many to many relationship is a kind of relationship where many records in one table or table A may be associated with many records in another table. So what we mean by that is we may have one to many relationship from both end of these two table. Whenever we have a one-to-many relationship from both end of the two table, then we refer to that as a many-to-many -many relationship. That's a very simple way of understanding that. So many record in one table is associated to many record in another table. So we have two examples of, uh, of explaining that. However, I will go with... Uh, I'll go with the second example first and then we'll look at the first example. So the second example is uh, the relationship between the sender table and receiver table in our social media database. So in that, uh, in that context, we, we may see that there can be many sender, that is many sender can send a DM to many receiver and many receiver can receive DM from many sender. So, in another word, one sender can send DM to many receiver, and then one receiver can also receive DM from many sender. All this is very uh, clear. So let's take a look at the sender and uh, receiver table again. So when you look at sender table, think of sender table as you. Uh, you trying to send a message to your friends. Maybe you have a list of friends, maybe friend one, friend two, friend three. And when you see receiver table, think of receiver table as each of these friends. So you as a social media user, you may want to send maybe an id message to all of your friends. So as a sender, right from your sender table, you send, let's say you have 10 friends and you send uh, IP id or id Mubarak message to each of these, uh, each of these uh, friends. So we, which are the receivers. So in that case, we have, you've actually sent ten messages to different receivers, right? So that that means just one record as a sender that you are uh, is actually as actually have uh, is uh, it actually have uh, it is. It has been actually associated to many receiver records, right? So, and then we can also think of it in the other way around. You can also be a receiver because maybe your friend may also decide to send you an id message, and um, some of your friend too may also decide to send, and and that your friend may also de decide to send id message to some other friends, not just you. So in that case, that friend as, as well actually have his sender account associated to many receiver accounts. So usually when we have many to many relationship, it, it results in having a table in between this relationship. Because 
A many-to-many -many relationship is nothing but a one-to-many relationship in both ends. So in case of accountable and postable, we only have one-to-many relationship in one hand. That is one account to one post. However, in many, many, many to many relationships, it is actually a one to many relationship in both ends. That is, one sender to many receiver, and the same way, one receiver to many sender. And for that reason, we need to have a table in between them, signifying the many to many relationship. And how do we link this? We simply have our one to many relationship here linked to one part of the table and then another one-to-many relationship linked to the other part of the table. So here indicating that we have both sender ID and then receiver ID. So right from my chart table, I can simply delete this sender and receiver since it has been generated for me using the... Uh, using the symbol for defining this many-to-many -many relationship. So in essence, that is how many-to-many -many relationship work. When we have one-to-many relationship both from both ends. So the second example is if you can think of, if we can think of, um, what is it called? Student and course. So I'll simply create a very simple table for student I'll call this student and over here I just need an ID and let's say matric number of that student and then let's assume we have another course we have a course table right so under the course we have ID for each of these course and maybe the course code and um, maybe And maybe the cost I too. So, you know, uh, the kind of relationship that actually exists between student and course is that a student actually enrolls for a course, right? However, a course, one course can actually be also enrolled by many students. Oh, let me uh, let me rephrase it again. As a student, we can actually enroll for many courses. Assuming I'm a student, I may want to enroll for the courses that I take for this semester. Maybe there are 10 courses. So for that reason, I need to select 10 courses from this course table and enroll for them. So in that case, I have, I have just my record as a student with my ID and metric number associated to many uh, courses, which are 10 courses which I've registered for. However, if we can look it in the other way around, one course in this course uh, course table can also be registered by many students. Maybe uh, maybe many students from the same level, the same department can actually register for just one particular course. So in that way too, we can say that for each course, that is one course in the course, uh, course table as a uh, is associated to many record in the student table. So in that in that kind of situation, we have a many-to-many -many relationship uh, between the student and the course table. And for us to depict that, we simply try to have uh, our registration. We need to have a table in between them. So we can call this table maybe course registration so and within this course registration table we may have the student id that is a student uh, enrolling for a particular course and then we we'll also need to have okay i delete this so we may have something like this, and then we may also have uh -oh, control Z. 
from here to here. So and we may also want to have the course ID. So for every uh, registration, we need to know, okay, the students are actually doing the registration and then the course ID, that is the course that that student actually registered for. So and in that case, we may see that one student registered for different course ID. And we may also see instances where one course ID is registered by many students, many different student ID. So this is another example of a one-to-many relationship. So uh, SQL, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's actually the standard language that we use to interact with our MySQL server to create and manage our MySQL database. And this language actually comprises of uh, the data definition language and a data manipulation language. A data definition language, we use uh, that subset of that language to create our database schema and then structure our table. And uh, whereas for the manipulation language, we use it to interact with this database to maybe add record, delete record, manipulate record, and do different kind of uh, things associated with manipulation of records or table in our database. So we look into the data definition language uh, part first. We'll see some of, uh, we'll start looking at some data definition languages, some commands in that language. And then I think we'll call it a day from here and then we'll continue from where we left off here in our next lecture. So here are some uh, data definition languages. Maybe we, so some of the users of this data definition language we can use it to create a database. We can uh, use it to also create tables in our database define their relationships, specify the primary key, the kind of constraint for each of these fields and so on. So we'll start looking at how we can do this one by one in with this uh, data definition language. So beginning with uh, creating a database. So if we actually want to create a database with our data definition uh, language, we have the command called create database and then create database command. So we use this command by specifying this create database and then the name of the database we want to create. We may also say create database if not exist, then the database name. So both of these are actually correct. However, the second option uh, checks whether that database exists or not. If it exists, it won't create the database. And if it doesn't exist, it simply creates that database. However, for the first option, it simply creates the database. And if that database exists, it will throw an error that that database, uh, that database cannot be created because it already exists. So let's try to make use, this, make use of this command to actually create our social media database. So in order for us to do, we need to uh, check into the MySQL server environment, which is actually a console-like environment to type in this command rather than using the MySQL workbench. But however, I already have my social already I have the social media database because we've created it when we uh, actually f the made a forward engineer from the MySQL workbench. So for that reason, we'll simply be creating another database. So I can just say create database, maybe I just say social 
underscore db so this will create this database for me so you can see uh, the response from that command query okay one row affected indicating that yes the command that I actually executed as uh, the command I actually run as executed successfully. So if I try to still say create database social DB, so you can see it's actually throws an error saying you can't create database social DB because it already exists. However, if I try to use that command create database, if if not if not exist so i have uh, a successful message here saying query okay however in, in this time around zero rows affected so meaning nothing was created because it simply run this command it checks whether that database exists and since it exists it didn't create the database so and it returned a successful response for me so uh the next command we'll look uh, into is how can we view our database when we create a database we need to know how we can actually view this database to, to view a database we simply use show databases command so i will simply simply go to your server and then type in show data basis so on type in show databases it will uh, bring out a list of database you have in your mysql server so from here you can see the social db that we just created so and then uh, the last command we'll be using today is uh, for selecting a database so out of all of those database maybe want to perform some operation to one of the database how can we actually select that database and uh, commence with our operation or whatever it is we want to perform so to do that we use uh, the use uh, database command we use the use command and then the database that we actually want to select so for the case of social db we simply say use and then social db so i can just say use social underscore db so database change so you can see here we are actually on social db and we can begin to do different kind of things on social db we can even start creating uh, tables for the social DB and some other things like that. So here's an activity for you to try uh, using the SQL command. Just try to write a command that create uh, a database called University DB. University DB. So it's very simple create database university db or maybe create database if not exist university db so here is our third exercise i want you to make use of this uh, use case design to actually design a database and that database should actually shows the relationship between uh, the tables so design a database that shows the relationship between the tables in that database using the information in this use case diagram. So in this case that you can see it is a system that has three users, a customer that creates accounts that can order a food and also reserve and can also make some reservation. So we can order food and I can also order for drinks. So, um, and then we have another user here that can create account, login, post. Okay, sorry, this is not part of the system. So, and then we have the admin. Actually, the admin add new item from menu 
you can delete item from menu update prices of this menu and also check transactions so it's a very simple uh, system whereby a customer can make an order and uh, from the admin part of you you can actually add items where customer can make order for and the admin can also delete some of these items it, it can update the prices of these items and you can also check various transactions like transaction regarding uh, orders that was made so this this is actually not part of the system this third uh, third uh, user is not part of the system so we only have two users which is the customer and admin it's not actually a complete system but just try and create a database for just this part of the system so and then the second exercise is uh so i want you to uh, sh this database that you've actually designed we designed in your exercise too i want you to show the relationship between the tables in each of these database so uh that's all for now and thank you very much